So we've got a song here. You said you couldn't stay. She folds her hands to help her find the words that fit. I kiss a little sky. Okay. And uh, this is if you wanted to export your audio files, um, just all the audio uh, media items in here, and be able to import it into another DAW so that all your files are starting from zero right here. So they all line up in time and everything. So the first thing we want to do is uh, either decide whether we want to do a time selection or start it from actual zero, 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 and then they can just trim it back so that it's a little bit easier to sync up with the click track. Now, um, if you tracked everything to a click, I would say do everything from zero zero, because then you don't have you know the next engineer that's going to mix it. Um, you know, I've had the experience this before. It doesn't have to try to slide around your first beat to find where your first beat's supposed to be, and hope that you don't have a pickup note, and then have everything all be all messed up. So, I do it from zero, so we don't have to do any kind of time selection. If you want to do a time selection, you just click on the timeline bar up here, left click and drag there that you would like to uh, render in this export and that that would be your time selection right there. So I'm going to press escape to get rid of that. So if you go to file, consolidate and export, we get this menu here. So the top options we have entire project. If I had a time selection here we'd have that as an option. You can do custom where you just type in um, I'm not sure why you'd do that other than just the time selection that you would like. Um, next down we have uh, Ignore Silence. Um, I never really use that because I want to make sure I get everything. I don't want to have any kind of issues. Um, there's a force output format. So if you um, have a session that is 96K and you want to bring it down to 441 for the, uh, for the mix stage or... Um, 448, whatever. Uh, you can check this off. You can force stereo or mono. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that how it is. And um, then we have our sample rate uh, mode, our resample mode. Uh, you can put this up a little bit, but the default is, um, you know, pretty good. Anyway, and I've never I've never heard a sound quality issue with uh, with just the default setting. And then we can do our consolidate two. You can actually do MP3 if you have that set up. Uh, A A AIFF if you go into an Apple computer, some of them like those better, or the standard wave that pretty much everything uses. And then we have our wave bit depth. I would suggest going to 24-bit uh, unless you recorded it lower than that at 16. Then obviously keep it at 16. If you have it Reaper set up to record at 32-bit floating point and you're going to Pro Tools, uh, you should definitely go to 24-bit because Pro Tools uh, apparently has issues or the industry standard of which they claim to be don't support everything that is more advanced. Anyway, um, so now the next section down here, we have Output Consolidated Files to Directory. Now I've got this going to Desktop. I'll change that to my external drive. Okay, and um, this is this option here, update project file with consolidated files. Now, if you click on this, it, what it's going to do is uh, it'll make a project file, it'll import them in, and it'll make your peak files. Now, if you don't care about that, I would just uncheck this. Um, you can save your current project before, and we don't want to do this either, which is creating a new project file. We just want to save... Um, Actually, I feel like this is a blanket. I'm not 100% sure if this is unchecked, if it does this, but either way, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't really matter. I'll, I always press save before I go ahead and export things anyway. So we got this on an entire project, so let's go to render from zero. So let's click process. And what it's doing now is it's going through every one of these tracks that has audio on it. Now, if you have sends or parent folders set up, it won't have those. You'd have to render them to a stereo file before you do this export. And um, any reverb sends or any guitar uh, left or rights that you have set up, um, like this one here, I have a guitar track that is sent to Amp Modeler here and Amp Modeler here. 
it's not going to make those. I, if I wanted to keep those, I would have to render these um, and mute the original type thing, then delete the the muted one before I go ahead and and um, render everything here. Okay, now let me open up my folder where I told to go, which was my external kind of kill up, and then I had burn export. And inside of here, you've got all of the files here. Now, I don't have my Reaper set to put its peak files all in one folder, so it puts it in this folder here. But when you send this off to a studio, I mean, it's got a really long name, weirdness. Um, you, you can clean up the name with a renamer. You can get one of those for free when you just, you know, basically open up and say, take out anything that says comma... REC than anything, <laughs> you know, just delete it or whatever. Um, so obviously you don't want to send off your uh, Reaper peak files. So in Windows, what I would do is sort by type and then select all the Reaper peak files and delete them. And then when you go back, you can just add this to an archive by zipping it or something and then you can send that off or just put the folder how it is um, on your external drive and give it to the studio that's going to mix it or sell or sell the stems to your to your client or whatever you're planning on doing so that's that that's how you go ahead and export uh, and consolidate the files out of Reaper so that you can mix it in any other DAW uh, by rendering everything to zero um, it's pretty simple this video is probably a little more in-depth than you even needed to know, but uh, now you know. Thanks for watching.